G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to review this LEGO mock of the Mandalorian's N1 Naboo Starfighter, as seen in the recent Book of Boba Fett Star Wars series on Disney+. We'll look at it in terms of design, cost, playability, and the all-important swooshability. We'll discuss some of the modifications we've made and a couple of mistakes in the building instructions. We will take a sneak peek of the painting that it is inspiring. We will finish off with a time-lapse speed build covering the key elements of the build. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So we'll just start off with the design and why I went with this one because there's a lot of different ones on Rebrickable and I just like the proportions the best on this from what I could see relative to the actual cost. The main thing being is you know this area back here was relatively consistent whereas other ones this can really pop up really high. I like the engine details and just the overall proportions seem to work quite well on this one. A big part of the reason of why I wanted something pretty spot on or at least look good is actually going through and doing a painting. So I wanted a good amount of detail. So this is still a work in progress, but it will be available for sale, the original. It's 18 by 24 inches, or for anyone dealing with metric, it's about A2 size. So that being the case, and using the model sort of for reference and lighting, I'd like to try to have enough details in there at a sensible sort of price without going too ridiculous. And I might be biased, but I think that's going to be pretty cool when it gets done. There has been some modifications I've made, and some of them quite simple. Like, originally, all of these here were the same as these antennas, but I just like the way that that just elongates that and just gives it a nicer feel for what I'm really interested in and what I like and the aesthetic that I go for. The big change I probably really made is in and around the engines. Like, the front piece here, I didn't like the amount of detail which it didn't have. And then also, too, when I looked at the reference photos for the actual ships, you had these details sort of down underneath the actual engines themselves, which I added this on, and that was something which I particularly liked. But overall, in terms of the engines, I did like the fact that there was asymmetrical design to it. In terms of the green bling here is different to what's over there, and there's some really nice build techniques and ways that that gets achieved in there. With the engines, they do pop off relatively easily, but they can be a little bit on the fragile side, so just need to make sure, kind of grabbing them in the right place. So the two engines side by side, and you can see how the designs are slightly different and being asymmetrical. As with any ship like this, one of the key aspects is how swooshable it is, and this one certainly, it feels good in the hand. The way that this section joins onto there, that is really rigid and solid, and you know, you can bounce it up and down, no too many big deals with that issue. The only thing I would say is just the way that these are connected with pins, there is a little bit of movement there, but being two of them are there, you know, it feels pretty stable. Same with the other side. It's the sort of thing, if you really start applying force to these engine parts here, they will come apart quite easily and sort of just see popping off and things like that. You know, there's probably a way to improve the design by putting like a Technic axle down through the middle of that, which actually might do. That's a good idea. Even the front guns are wedged in pretty well, having these pieces either side. You know, you can have a bit of movement if you really force it. It's connected with a snot all the way back here. So despite that, though, it is relatively strong, and you'd think it would be a lot more flimsy than what it is, but it can't easily be knocked or anything like that. While the back here has a nice little profile in the way that those canopies go up there, there is one little compromise in terms of the minifigure. He has to be leaning back. If he's up like that, it hits the top of his helmet and you can see the gap that's raised there. The other thing is getting the pilot in or out. You've basically got to take out this whole section here because his legs are wedged in underneath. Again, it's not one of those end of the world sort of things, but you know that whole control unit sort of comes out. You kind of think of it like an F1 car, essentially. And then you can get... In this case, the Mandalorian pilot is straight out, and he's got a nice little comfy seat there. So it'd be just be the one little thing to be aware of. So you just put the figure in there, controls go in, head slides back, canopy down, and done. So in universe, these are obviously N1 Naboo starships, which have a whole yellow profile. And I like how in the Mandalorian, even though it's what 70 odd years later, they're still keeping hints of the color that's there. 
the instructions suggested having these as a light tan, but I didn't particularly like that. And if you go for like a bright yellow, one of these parts you can't get in yellow anyhow, and then it's going to be too jarring. So I just went for like a pearl gold and it gives it that color differential, but still it's quite subdued and it's not heavily saturated. So while there's a nice little highlights and details, they don't jump out in your face and hit you over the head saying, here I am, bright yellow. The build experience on this is pretty good as well. The instructions for the most part are pretty spot on. There's a couple of steps which there's some issues with, but overall it goes through in a logical sort of way, handles it quite well. Most things are pretty clear the whole way throughout. As we already mentioned, you've got the asymmetry in the engines. So that's always nice to see rather than just sort of, you know, yeah, go through, build this once. Okay, now do it two times. The only issues I found were on step 37 and 69, I think. One of them that one of these pieces in here seems to be a little bit more floating. So if you were to push down on it from the top, it doesn't have a great deal of strength. So it's just a matter of going in underneath and either putting in um, a one by two brick or a two by four that just gives it a little bit extra support and stability. And then when building this back section here, they had in a two by two brick, which doesn't actually fit because it's just got a, another little piece which goes across. So what you really need to do is put in a couple of two by two plates and then a one by two just to give that extra stability in there. It's just one of those things where this obviously hasn't been built physically yet when the designer was doing it. So you've got a brick passing through somewhere which just isn't physically possible, but just little minor details more than anything else. So the cost to put something together like this, it worked out to be about 40 pounds, so maybe about 55 us dollars and that's for about 700 pieces so it's not ridiculously expensive but obviously if this was to be an official set which was released you know the price would probably be in that 30 pound you know maybe 40 dollars sort of range and then it just sort of comes down to how much you want to spend like i think these are a flat silver on here because i just wanted that sort of little bit of shininess to it uh, again as the in-universe sort of thing is playability wise i think as a starship obviously you've got the two canopies where the characters can sort of sit in there as soon as i saw this i thought you know they're not going to make a point to go through and have this sort of starship and not have Grogu sitting in the back. It was only revealed on yesterday's episode where Grogu was actually sitting in the pilot there, so having the Mandalorian and Grogu together seems to make perfect sense. And it's a pretty solid unit, so, you know, if you're having space battles and things like that, I think kids would really get a, a kick out of it and enjoy it. The only thing in keeping the profile that it's got there, you've got this tapering section which sort of goes up, so if you are to put it flat, it does sort of angle down a little bit. If you really want to bridge pedantic, you probably figure out some sort of landing gear or something in there just to keep it upright. But even with these side grieving details which are added in here, you know, it can sort of take a, a fair bit of, you know, bouncing around and punishment. So and that's good that it's still holding together, except for that one which has just fallen off. Maybe don't do it too bad. In terms of the modification which I made, most of it was just getting one of these little spider rings and then just putting a whole bunch of clips with the slope pieces on them and then just the dome piece in the middle. It can be a little bit fidgety, but then you just need to make sure that they all you know, wrap around to the right place. And it gives you just a little bit of play in terms of you know getting the aesthetic that you want. In terms of the extra little gleebling which I've added on, um, relatively straightforward. Just one of those little clips there. And because you then end up with the cones facing and each direction you do at some point need to go through and get that change of direction and the way in which you've achieved that is basically at this point here inside there is a bar for length so that holds the cone in place that then is facing in the opposite direction there so you've got the stud at this end stud at the other end and it just slots straight in there so simple but effective i'm sure there's better ways of greebling this out but it did what i wanted it to do and to attach it, it's just one of those octagon type spider rings and the clip literally just goes straight onto there. Anyone's eagle eye might have spotted the slight differences in the way that the engines are being built. I wanted to maintain as much as possible the greebling and the way that this engine was done. But to attach these clips, I had to insert one of these little spider rings into there, which then if you look at it, you know, they are slightly offset there. 
so they're not exactly the same and then also down the bottom here to get this one to fit on properly had to add in this 2x2 two two round in here so it then just changes the lengths a little bit not the end of the world but for my purposes it was fine but for anyone who might be OCD about that you might have to tweak the designs just a little bit if you want them dead set symmetrical but I think in the flavor of the overall ship that's not a big deal overall I feel it's a really solid model even without some of these engine modifications, it's going to give you a pretty good approximation as to the actual ship. The fact it's come out so quickly, given it was only introduced in universe a week or two ago, you know, I feel it's a no-brainer that this will eventually see an official Lego release in some form. But given the way that Disney being able to keep everything under wraps, it might be a year or two away, I'd say, before that happens. So if you really need something like this in your Star Wars collection, then obviously go through and brick link it out or get the secondary parts. And for the design relative to the cost, it seems to be quite good value. And it's pretty sturdy and not like other models that you can get where it looks good, but if you're not touching it in a particular way, it will fall apart. Quickly going through the time lapse, you start off by building the front wing section, build out some of the fuselage, and then we go through. And the way that the little engine detail gets done is pretty cool on the little shift spike there. And then I'm going to go along and build out some of the engines themselves. Again, with my own slight little modifications already made to them. The other side, I really like that other side build too. Mandalorian coming in and attaching the wings, and I think we're all good to go. Test flight. Whoosh. If you are interested in buying the N1 Starfighter painting, drop me an email, matt at mattelder.com. Thanks very much for watching, and if you've gotten something out of this video, hit that thumbs up button. What do you think of this mock, and do you like my engine modifications? Sound off in the comments below, or type Naboo, and we'll know you've gotten all the way to the end of the video. Here are some painting videos you might also enjoy. Alternatively, these may be of interest. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.